Hey everybody, how's it going? Corey here from ThemeCo with a quick video on how to create your first components using Cornerstone's brand new component builder. This video is not gonna be talking about how to design the simple buttons that you're seeing here or anything like that. It's more about kind of the mechanics and the nomenclature, some things you're gonna hear and use a lot when using the component builder, such as what does it mean to export a component and how does it show up in my library, things like that. So. With all that being said, let's just dive right in here. Now, the first thing you'll see is that I've got a component document open. And remember, we can see all of our documents in the document navigator here, and all of our component documents, much like our headers or pages, will be found at the very bottom under this component section here. If you need to start with a brand new blank document, you can do that by clicking on the plus here, scrolling to the bottom, clicking create component, and that will open up a brand new blank component set for you to start working in. The first major difference that you need to be aware of with components versus how global blocks used to function under the old system is that you can technically export multiple components from one single document. So when you think of these documents, think of them more like sets of components. It's really what you choose to export from them that will end up in your library. Because of this, there are some really helpful and useful ways we can organize content, and we'll talk about that more in some later videos. But for example, one thing I like to do is maybe make one uh, just for buttons, because you might have a lot of different button styles that you're working with for different purposes on your site. And the cool thing here is that we can design them all in one little canvas, kind of see how they interrelate, and then export them and start using them in our site as we need to. So let's take a quick look at these two buttons here and kind of see what we've got going on. And the first thing you'll notice is that these buttons are actually built using our div element. So these are fully custom elements. I'm not actually using the button element from the element library. I'm kind of building my own from scratch here. So you'll see I've set the tag to an anchor. I can set a link because of that. I've just got all my custom styling set up and then my text inside here is set up using our headline element, but I've just set its tag to a span. And I've of course got all of its styling set up so that I can get it looking how I want. And this is one of the first concepts I kind of want you to be aware of is when you actually export this element into your library, this component, it's not going to be seen as two separate elements anymore. For example, in this builder, you can see that I can hover over the div, click on that. I can hover over the headline, click on that. But when I actually use this on my page, I'm just gonna see it as a button, just like I would a standard element in the library. So you can create some very complex layouts with intricately nested markup and perhaps responding to different rules or classes or styles you've got set up. And ultimately when you end up using it on your page, all of that's kind of swept under the rug for lack of a better term and, and just kept nice and tidy. So all you see is the end result and you don't have to worry about all of that convoluted markup that you might potentially have working with a more complex setup. Now, just because I've built these buttons in the component builder here does not mean that they're showing up in my library yet. For us to do that, we need to export our content so that the library knows what from this document is actually an element that I need to start using when you're building pages. So to do that, we're gonna click on our main button element here, kind of the root markup of our component and we're gonna to go to the element manager. Now there's a couple different ways to get into this. One would be to go to the workspace header and click on manage element. It's the little cog icon here. Personally, I've set up a keyboard shortcut of command E. So when I click that, the manage element pop-up appears and I can start working through it as I need. Now there's a few simple things at the top here, such as editing the label if I wanna do that. We have a new locking mechanic, kind of like in Photoshop, if I just wanna kind of tuck this away for a moment and not worry about accidentally editing it, we can do that. We've got our custom parameters, which we will talk about in just a moment here. And this is also where you can save an element template if you need to. You can think about this like the old element preset system. So if you save a little snapshot here, you can drag those in anytime. However, what we wanna do here is make this a component. So we're gonna go down to the component section here and we're simply gonna click on export component. Now. Once you do that, a few different options appear and we will go over these in later videos, but you really don't need to worry about them right now. And effectively, that's all we need to do to get this showing up in our library. So let's go to our secondary button here. 
I'm gonna hit Command E, but remember you could also go to Manage Element up here. I'm gonna go down, hit Export Component, and I'm gonna save this document. And now that I've saved those changes, I'm gonna hop over to this page and we're gonna actually use these buttons in our design. Now, keep their names in mind. We've got Primary Button and Secondary Button. So I'm on a very simple page here. I've got a kind of auto width row here set up. That's why these columns are kind of collapsing in a little bit. And all I wanna do is drag my primary and secondary button in here so I can get a quick call to action set up. So let's go to our element library and I'm gonna search for button because that was in the title of my component. Now ignore these components here with this button prefix. That is for another video we're gonna walk through later. Uh, but remember, this primary button and secondary button, those are the two that I just exported from my component set. So let's just drag these in like we would any normal element. I'll put that in the first column. Go back here, search for button, and bring in our secondary button. And you can see that we now have our components showing up on our page. You'll see that when we click on these elements, over in the workspace, it says component, this component does not have any custom parameters mapped to it, and that's why we're not seeing any controls in the workspace. We can, of course, duplicate, delete, manage it if we need to, move up the document tree. And we've also got this helpful link here. So if you're working on a particular component and you wanna go back to the document where it was set up and start editing it again, you can do that by clicking this right here. And this is where I wanna to begin to show you the power of components, because the thing to remember with components in the current state that they're being used just with a simple export like this is that they are live, meaning I can go back to that root document, make edits, and that will be propagated out throughout my entire site. So let's click on component here, and you'll see it took me back to my other document tab. And let's just say, for example, you know, we've had these buttons out for a while, and we decide, you know, instead of rounded corners, I'm gonna use um, just straight right angles for the border radius here. So I'll go to both these buttons. I'll set these to zero. I'm gonna save this, hop back over to my page, and you can see that our buttons live updated back on the page to have the right angles now for their radius instead of that rounded radius. Now, where this gets really powerful is imagine that you had used this primary and secondary button hundreds of times throughout your website. Think of workflows in the past where maybe you had to make an edit and had to go find each instance of that. It can be a slightly tedious process, but with components, we go back to the source of truth in the component document, our component export. We make the edits that we wanna see, we save it, and then everywhere that that instance is being used, it's gonna be updated on the live site. Now, these buttons as they're currently set up are not super useful because they obviously have the exact same label they also don't have a custom link. And this is where parameters come in. Parameters are a way for us to map our own custom controls to an element and allow us to modify it per instance. And the really neat thing about this is you can make this as simple or as complex as you need to. So for example, if all you wanted to do was create a simple button that had this label always and a particular link always, you could just make that button and then drag it in and make it have no controls over here in the workspace at all. And that's a perfectly valid way to use components. However, parameters give us a lot more flexibility here. So let's jump back to our buttons component sheet. I'm gonna go to my buttons here and just quickly put their border radius back. So let's talk about how we can wire up some very simple parameters to give us more mileage out of these buttons. And the two main things that I wanna do for this example is set up an input to receive um, some label text. So I can change this from learn more to anything I want it to be. And I also need an input to receive text for the link or the href attribute that we're gonna pass through. So let's click on our primary button here, go to our element manager, and we're gonna click on edit parameters. And that brings up a little code editor here. Um, and parameters are entered in using JSON format, which is JavaScript object notation. It's got a little bit of a syntax to it, but it's really not that hard to write. You just need to make sure that it's kind of structured in the appropriate way. And this really is kind of a low level abstraction because we're basically kind of giving you almost direct access to our control mapping API. So you're basically writing in control similar to how we do it on the back end here. 
Now, again, there is a lot that you can do with the parameter syntax, and there is documentation on this, and we're gonna have more videos that go into more advanced examples. Uh, but for right now, we're just gonna start with a very simple setup. So we're gonna start with our open and closing curly brackets. And I'm first gonna make an item for my label text. So I'm gonna click back in here. We've gotta do double quotes here. And I'm gonna give this control a key or a name, basically an ID that I'm gonna reference later when I wanna pull that value into my component. So we're gonna call this label. Go over here, do a colon, open up some more curly brackets. And you'll see as soon as I did that, I have this params tab show up over here on my element. And if I click on that, you'll see that I've got an empty label control over here. So this API kind of by default tries to give you a lot of stuff for free. It will take your key here and try and use it as um, a simple label. You've also got the input, but within these curly brackets, we can be a little bit more specific about how we want this to be set up. So um, just to be really clear here, we're gonna give it a type of text. Again, this is all documented online and we'll go into it more later. We're also gonna give it an initial value of learn more. And you can see right as I type that in, it starts to appear over in the input there. And then if you wanted to be more explicit about the label here, you could actually add a label key and write in something more verbose if you wanted that. But personally, I think that just keeping it as label is kind of nice there. All right, so while we're here, and since we've already got this uh, control set up here, let's go ahead and duplicate all of this and set up another one. We'll call it href, and this is gonna be for our link. So href is the key, that's how we will reference it later. It's still a type of text. Let's call its label link, or perhaps something like URL. And then for the initial here, let's just do a pound sign or a hash symbol and we can kind of use that as a placeholder to know that, okay, I probably haven't put my link in here yet. And then another fun thing we can actually do is we can set up the actual placeholder text inside our control here. So for example, if we wanted to give people a little hint on the format of string this control is expecting, we might do something like eg https example.com. And you can see if I go back over here and remove that, I've now got my placeholder text in there, but of course we can leave our hash as our initial value here. Now, I also know that I'm gonna use this on my other button. So let's go ahead and copy all of this content, click on our secondary button here. I'm gonna bring open the element manager, go into parameters and simply paste that over. And that's another really nice benefit of having this kind of low level abstraction, we can very easily copy and paste things, move them around, borrow controls as you start setting stuff up. It really becomes um, kind of a snowball effect as you start creating your own ways that you like to map things in. And you'll see from the API later that there is a lot of flexibility in how you can set these controls up. So I want you to remember these keys of label and href because now we're gonna go wire these up on both of our buttons. And to do that, we're gonna use dynamic content. So if you're not familiar with dynamic content, we've got plenty of videos and documentation on that. Um, you can definitely go check that out. Um, but we're basically gonna come in here and uh, first I'm gonna wire up the label for my button. So to do that, I'm gonna remove this. We're gonna use our dynamic content syntax, which is this uh, double opening curly bracket and then this double closing curly bracket. We've got our DC for dynamic content, a colon, and then a P, and this stands for parameter. So we don't have to type out parameter or params or whatever, just a P. And then we'll do another colon. And now we're gonna do label. And you can see that as soon as I wrote label in and I'm referencing that label key from my parameters, it's now pulling through that initial value that was set on the button when I set up my parameters. So let's take this dynamic content string, we'll pop over here and we'll plug that into this button as well. And then let's go back to our primary button. And we're gonna jump in here. I'm gonna pop this in and remember that our parameter here was href. So I've got that set up. I'll now hop to my secondary button, go down to its URL input. We've got href in there. And now I have completely wired up these buttons so that I've got just a little bit more flexibility out of them. 
And we can actually test this right now. So for example, if I click on my primary button, I could come here and start typing, click me. You'll see that show up over in the preview. I can also go in here and do an example link. And when I hover over it, you'll see that example.com is showing up down in the lower left-hand corner of my browser there. So we know that we've wired up everything here properly. I'm just gonna set these back to the default values, save everything. And now we can start using these parameters on the page where we already put our components. So let's jump back over to our button test page. Let's jump down to our primary button and say that we want that label to be begin now. And then let's go to our secondary button and make this one say more info. And of course we would set the links how we want them to be. And of course this is only the beginning of what you can start to do with parameters, but hopefully this starts to give you just a little glimpse into the power of components. There is a lot to explore here. And again, the real benefit of it is components are what you make them. They can be incredibly simple in their implementation or you can create incredibly robust architectures that uh, nest components within other components and use all sorts of design systems and things to build out really complex relationships and how they all work. So it's really up to you how you wanna use it and it kind of fits into whatever workflow you deem best for your project. So like I said, hopefully that kind of covers the, the basics of how components work and you're starting to get a glimpse of how they operate. I think the big takeaways here are A, the global nature of components. So remember the styling changes we made a second ago. If you update that component from its source of truth in the document, it will update every instance where you use it later. Remember that component sets can include multiple exports. So we created our button set that had two buttons in it. We exported those as we needed them and they showed up in our library like so. And we also explored some very basic parameter mappings, which gave us a ton more mileage out of these buttons, allowing us to update the labels, change the URLs. And again, that's only the beginning because you can of course map these to style controls. Um, we're gonna get into some responsive styling later. There's just a lot of fun stuff that you can explore using components and parameters together. So hopefully that does give you um, a nice little glimpse into this world. Uh, and starts getting kind of your wheels turning on how you might use them in your own projects moving forward.